Okay, um, here's one of the last jobs, um, uh, one of the few last jobs that I have here, the little punch list jobs, and that was to close up this center section here. Um, what I ended up with is, is just two closure panels, pretty simple. It's just aluminum, it's covered with the same carpeting material and a little bit of Velcro, and that Velcro sticks to the carpeting material that's already in the car, in the trunk, so that just... Uh, fits in there like that get this handle out of the way it's in case you lock yourself in the trunk somehow you get to pull yourself open this has a little bit of velcro on it also which just that stabilizes that and this uh crazy looking thing here which is just velcroed on the top edge because it fits down in behind here and it's got a large um, clearance hole right here but then it's closed up, it's just covered with this rug material, so there's just a small slot for this rod to go through. That little rod there is what actuates the, the lock mechanism with the key on the outside. So, and then that just shoves down in there, that holds that down, and that's the last of that. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that goes on here is this, that little yellow prop rod there. In my car, I made a little bit of a, a little J a loop that was welded on the bottom side here and this little fabric loop conveniently just slipped I could slip it over there to hold this open if I needed to get into here for the fuse box or the battery or anything in this little storage compartment which as you know SRT models don't come with a spare tire uh, there's just not enough room to put a 20 inch tire or the donuts kind of useless because the donut won't fit over the Brembo brakes so uh better have triple a with these cars bottom line is is that to hold it open i've just made a simple uh wooden prop here and it's yellow so that it matches the car and it's easy to see and drilled a hole in the uh forward section of this foam and it just drops down in there and that holds that open so you could work without that falling on you and that's it for the inside of the trunk lid in the back here, um, I've gone ahead and uh, mounted the license plate, so we're legal, we're street legal. Um, there's a camera here, uh, but I don't know how to do the hookup, uh, so I'm going to leave that to others, but I've got it fished through, the wires are in there, and then this panel here, uh, this closure panel, which is held on with just, there's, uh, excuse me, there's three screws, one here and two at the bottom here that hold this on, so these panels remove and then these come off and then you can access the wiring to the taillights and anything that needs to be done to activate this camera here of course it has to be hooked into the monitor up front um also i was going to uh take, take the car to uh, a muffler place and have them put the tailpipes on and the tips and everything and uh, replace the mufflers if necessary because we don't know if the mufflers that are on there are going to give off a drone since we've removed the resonators from here on my car at a terrible drone at about 1800 rpms and it was just it was impossible to drive that thing anywhere um you know you get on a 45 mile an hour stretch of road and you'd have a steady climb and that thing would just shake your teeth out anyway my solution ended up being <clears throat> they took the um uh replaced the mufflers with uh some uh, Dynamax, I believe they are. Let's see what they are here. I think I had, uh, I forget what I had in there originally, but these have, uh, yeah, they're Dynamax. Uh, they actually have some fiberglass matting in them. They call them the old man mufflers because they take away all that jibber jabber, but it has a nice tone to it. Anyway, a friend of mine was looking under here the other day when I had it up on all four jack stands and he looked at the mufflers and said, you know, these things are Chrysler Corporation, so they're actually the stock ones. They might have baffling in them that doesn't allow for the drone. So we're going to test drive this car and see if we need them. So in the meantime, I was just going to set the tips on here using some temporary uh, uh, device to, to clamp them up there so that they would know what position to put them in. And then I, the more I looked at it and the more work it seemed like it was going to be that I just went ahead and... Uh, I don't know if you can see this under here, but uh, I just went ahead and moved uh, this little turn. I cut it and then moved it inboard and moved the uh, the hangers around and just went ahead and got a couple lengths of uh, two and a half inch exhaust tubing 
and just finish them out and uh, so they don't have to do that if this thing does need new mufflers it's just going to need the two mufflers dropped out in the center of the car and we'll go on from there and that'll be kind of nice to not have spent a thousand dollars on a new exhaust system because that's about what it was going to cost anyway um so we got all that done got to slam that because that uh that uh, molding is a little bit stiff right now it's brand new over time that will definitely loosen up as it compresses but um it's just about done um another thing it does need is it needs to go to get the air conditioning recharged in the process of uh, fixing the engine don had to uh, unhook the uh, air conditioning lines and they evacuated so um the interior is in um Door panels are on. Um, the, uh, the little courtesy lights came on. I'm pretty happy about that because if they didn't, we're just going to put a piece of black tape over them because uh, they're getting them out now is almost impossible with this headliner the way it's installed. You have to take out the entire back seat section in order to free it up in the back there. It's hard to even show you exactly how that's all trapped back there. So in other words, the headliner goes in first and then all the side panels go in and the corners and the package tray in the back all have to go in. Uh, and they all trap this, uh, see this end over here? It goes down behind the uh, side panels. So quite the job just to drop this down to unplug one of these little buggers. They're just sandwiched in there. But uh, you have these courtesy lights that come on too, but they're easily accessed. Just pull this pod down and change those lights out if you have to. So that's all these guys here. A post covers are in. Um, and um, the uh, issue that I had uh, in uh, one of my videos where I plugged the car in and the windows kept jumping down. Um, so I had to re basically charge up the battery, get it a full charge before I could program the uh, the, uh, the windows. Well, I just hooked the battery back up to the car right now, and uh, it's not programmed to do that, and it really doesn't need to do that. So I'm pretty happy about that. So uh, uh, what I'm talking about is the smart window technology that's in the Challenger doors that drops the window, and then when you close the window, or close the door, the window jumps up and tucks into a U-channel. Well, this car doesn't have U-channel seals. They just, uh, the window just closes against the, the door seals there, so that piece of technology was not necessary, but it had to be included in the car in order for the, um, the rest of it to talk to itself. So uh, there's a way to program it, but again, it's not really necessary to be programmed, and I'm happy that the there, it's just uh, it's been neutered for now but um, had a friend of mine like I said um, I showed him some pictures of the car and he called it the nuclear banana which uh, it's a pretty good name for it I like that but um, we'll just uh, go around to the other side and uh, show you this side over here So the next thing to do is it's uh, there's insurance on the car, it's got plates, um, and it's drivable, and it's about done. So um, this will constitute my walk around for this. Oh, there's something else I wanted to show you that was a little issue that um, came up. Let's see if I can show you this. Uh, when I put these door panels in, because we use the Challenger lower portion of the the door uh, uh panel that has all this uh pocket and everything it's actually in the right position left to right down at the base here because the pinch welds match up but as you climb there's a taper in in the post and the door leans in so as you get up towards the seat this portion is, leans over in a little bit more than it would in the challenger so it's a little more cramped but that's not was the issue the issue was this portion over here um, sticks out just enough that when you opened up the glove box, the glove box came down and smashed into it and you couldn't open it. Well, what I've done was I cut the, uh, the door down and there was still enough material left so that I could reintroduce this little bumper. There's still enough landing space for it. It's about an inch and, I don't know, it's about an inch and a half or so that I cut off of here. But what I was surprised to see is I knew this would be a hollow door because it's plastic inside and out. 
but there's vertical ribs in there and I was very close to one of the vertical ribs so what I did was I just sanded it all off so it has a nice clean finish on it which I was expecting to have to come up with some uh, something to close this up to make it look right but uh, then I just took the this piece here and I just went ahead and applied some velcro to it and that's just velcroed into place that's the rem remnants of the the glove box door and now uh, it doesn't interfere with this I didn't uh, expect anything or I excuse me I wasn't looking out for that because in my car because mine uses a uh, um, I used a 2006 SRT8 charger my dashboard is four inches farther forward, so that wasn't an issue. Even though I also used, I made homemade door panels, which were shallower. Everything about them was shallower. But I, I checked in my car, and it, it, it's close, but uh, it's not an issue. Um, anyway, uh, these door sills, what had to be done here is the door sill normally comes over, wraps around, and goes down again to capture the carpet. Well, that doesn't... It's not necessary here because we have these inner plastic uh, captures over here for the rug and the challenger so i had to trim off everything up to this point here leave about a half inch of material to go up over the pinch weld and then i had to run it through the bead roller because it had some contours in it just to flatten it out to make sure that it was as low as it it could be in order to not interfere with the bottom of the door here so that was a little bit of an issue um took a little time to get us get this all uh down um mainly because of the door panel position that I, I, I chose. But um, console looks good, uh, seats look good. Another thing that I did because these are stationary windows, um, I did all that work inside to make sure that I had a pocket that if water got in, it would drain out. But um, what I also did was in addition to the window whisker molding that was put in there that holds the window in place, I put another rubber molding here in here that pushed down against the glass and then kind of caught the inside here. And then I took um, some windshield urethane and taped it off and made a narrow bead to tape uh, to um, glue it right to this um, stainless steel tracking here. So that's sealed up against the window and uh, so any water comes to here and just sheds off hopefully if anything gets by there's the inner track and the drain that goes down through the door and everything that you catch that hopefully just won't see too many torrential downpours but you know car shows are in the summertime and this pop-up thunderstorms will get you every once in a while so you got to keep an eye out for that and uh so it all relaxes to see if any issues come about from um uh, a test drive had that little bucket under there because I filled it up with some window washer fluid and I didn't know if that little container was leaky or not so I just put a little container under there to catch anything if it came out but it's dry um, so um, just looking forward to seeing how this thing goes on the road and seeing if I've got enough tire clearance if that's uh, even an issue at this point because the wheels the tops of the tires are just about a half of an inch um, above where that opening is. And hopefully that's, still, that's enough for the clearance. But in, in case it isn't, I have, uh, like I said, I have these uh, pieces here that I bought. And Don can put these in if he wants to. They're, they're two pucks that um, extend. They go on top of the, uh, the their shock absorbers and they've got the springs. It's almost like a McPherson strut set up and the where it bolts into the top of the tower these pucks will extend it up these are three quarter inch spacers there's two of them in here they got longer studs uh, they'll lift the car up about three quarters of an inch if that's not enough there's another kit that raises it up an inch and a quarter which should be plenty at that point um, because then you'll the entire top of the tire will be exposed uh, through that wheel opening at any rate the nuclear banana is uh is done um so um hopefully we'll get this thing to uh mechanics and get him to fill up that uh, air conditioning system and we won't have any problems with tire rubs and we won't have anything uh, additionally here to uh address but uh you never can tell um when it, the truth of the the deal is told when you get it out on the road and see what's rattling what's shaking what's buzzing what's clicking what's popping 
anybody who just built a car knows that's just part of the game. Anyway, I appreciate everybody who uh, followed along with this. Uh, and uh, when I get a chance to get this thing out in the sun, I'll just do a, a little photo slideshow uh, of this out in the sunshine uh, sometime down the road here. And uh, But for now, uh, that's the end of the road for Don's uh, 68 Dodge Charger body swap onto a 2011 SRT 396, excuse me, 396, 392, 396 Chevrolet, 392 um, V8 um, scat pack. Uh, anyway, I appreciate everybody that watched all, uh, all the episodes and um, hopefully in the beginning of December we'll be starting a new project. Um, but, uh, again, thanks for watching.